Okay, good morning guys and girls and thank you for watching ASFN. You guys will note I always say welcome guys and girls. As uh, 7 to 8 percent of our viewers on ASFN Fishing is female. That shows there's quite a big interest from the female market on fishing, which we've known for years. The girls really uh, finding interest in that outdoor lifestyle and that's great to see. Now guys, yes, we're all in lockdown, it's terrible, we're making traces, we're doing all these things, but the mental game, I think, is, is surely the, the more difficult part um, of getting through this whole idea that we can't go out and go fish. We keep ourselves busy with, with some rigs and traces, and we said we'll bring you guys some additional videos, which we've tried our best, and we're quite hectic and busy here, getting it all edited. Now, what I'm doing today, guys, I put out a video where I said cleaning my tackle room, where I asked everyone to comment on clips they would like to see. And quite a few uh, comments came through on Kuta traces. So this week, I'm going to cover Kuta traces fairly extensively the way I do them. Okay, and uh, we'll run through a whole bunch of things. But first, make sure you subscribe to our channel. It really helps us. Push that little bell notification button so you can be notified each time we upload a video. And guys, like the video. All of that really helps us to grow our channel. Uh, we've done this now for 15 years where we bring as many educational fishing videos we can. At first we started on, on our national sports channels, on television, and we moved over to YouTube three years, two and a half years, three years ago. Uh, to solely work on YouTube. So all these videos are coming through to you and uh, we've got a handful of uh, people that support us and have the same beliefs as what we do to grow the industry and to help you anglers out there get better results. So what I'm going to do, I'm quickly going to today just give you on this clip, I'm going to give you an overview of what I get together to do Kuta traces because there's so many variations you want. Well, I, I like to fish. Um, it depends on you as an individual. And to run you through a couple of things, well, what I've got here is your selection of skirts. I've got quite a few. I just took a couple out there. Um, beads, we fish with these green beads for Kuta as well. They, they over the years, have proven themselves. Then for dead baits, where we weight the hook. I'll show you guys how to do that in different sizes. That depends, remember these traces, you all make uh, different sizes depending on the bait you're going to use. And if it's dead bait or live bait. This specifically, we do for dead bait to keep your bait upright. Okay, when, when you're drifting on a slow trawl, that bait sits upright even on the paddle skis, okay, well, because of the sinker hanging in the bottom. All right, so, and you get them in a variation of sizes, uh, make them in different sizes, purely depending on the bait you use. This, for instance, small little uh, moss bunker, and you'll only be using one treble or single hook. Then what I'm going to do, these are all my carrying hooks. I like using the hoodlum, very strong hook, should that hook the fish, or any other fish that comes past you know you've got the right hook on there and that's why I use these hoodlums. You can also use a little circle hook if you want and that carries your bait through the upper lip in most cases and sometimes depending on the bait I'll hook it in the bottom lip. The important part is especially on live bait that mouth must be open. On a dead bait you're going to put it through the bottom and the top lip uh, to make it more streamlined through the water otherwise that jaw starts stretching open and hanging behind it and it takes everything that's natural about that bait away. Um, look I'm sure Kuta doesn't like eating zombie fish either so let's just leave it at that. Then there's two types of traces in most cases where you're going to keep uh, Kuta or King Mackerel as, as a lot of countries refer to them, uh, Spanish Mackerel in Australia is uh, a lot of people keep them for the purpose of eating because they're pelagic. They travel a lot. A couple of interesting facts I need to tell you. They, they're fairly fast growing fish, but not as fast growing as, as for instance, Dorado and Wahoo and Marlin. But uh, definitely pelagic and definitely rather a fish to keep for eating purpose than for instance, bottom fish or residential fish. But if you're gonna release it, you won't be using treble hooks. You'll be using single hooks as well as for ICFA purposes, if I uh, under correction, but I think for ICFA purposes, you also have to use single J hooks to be able to, to, to target them. And uh, I think you're, you're not al as allowed as many hooks. There's a restriction on how many hooks you can use. Um, when fishing to eat them or keep them, the guys can really gang up some, some, um, some treble hooks. For instance, if you use wolf herring, 
or, or rather big long baits, you're going to have a couple between 5 and 10 centimeters between each hook to make sure you get the hook up. As uh, King Mackerel or Kuta comes at a very, very exhilarating speed when it hits your bait and can sometimes cut between the hooks. We've all seen it so many times fishing for Kuta that they can hit between the hooks. So you don't want that gap too big. All right. And now looking at all the types of bait fish we use, we're using small little moss bunkers, which means you're going to have a carry hook and you're going to have one short little with a treble or a single J hook. And then going longer, you might have two. Here's an example for a mackerel, a dead mackerel, or even a live mackerel. You'll use two. This is very big and thick hooks. This is just a couple of samples. That's your carrying hook. That will carry, and you see the spacing there. That's on a mackerel or a sardine or a red eye. That's the, the, the trace I'll use. One of them on the one side and one on the other side. Okay, and just again to balance the, the, the fish. Now you can still use the weighted hooks even on live bait. Um, that's up to you. Uh, sometimes we go really, I like fishing finesse for them. Uh, for the kuta and it gets me better results but it also sometimes when you hook or get those bigger ones it can count against you and what I mean with that is the pihana wire you use okay um, in most cases I use a number to give you an example a number five that's a safe one but I'll go even down to a four on a, on a day where it's tough fishing up to a six when the really big ones are around you can go up to a size uh, 6 piano wire. I use the American fishing wire, toothproof. And then your leader from here that's got your skirt on, you fish, guys fish up to one and a half meters, a meter. I prefer a shorter one. I would say up to 80 centimeters, maybe to a meter if I know there's bigger ones around. Um, a scooter with a scoot on their tail and stuff can sometimes hit you off on the leader. So, and also the way they, they feed they can hit your leader with their teeth. So you do fish, and what I do there is a number four. I don't go heavier than a number four, which I make my, my trace leader on with, uh, with this. Now, guys, you'll also see these little red ones. They've been working very well over the last couple of years. And this we do with American Fishing Wire, bleeded leading wire, that one by seven, and this is a 45 pound they come in. Uh, more than enough. Now what this does, okay, firstly that little red, I think it helps quite a bit sometimes for, for, for the bite, depending on your water color, depending on what the fish are feeding on, a whole bunch of uh, like fishing works. We very, the way we target, you'll put one of those, one of those, one of those out at different depths to see where the kuta is feeding and what they're feeding on. But what this does, one of the good qualities about it, doesn't kink as easily as piano wire, so you can reuse them more than what you would be in normal cases with piano wire. A lot of times fishing for kuda with, with piano, one fish, one trace. It can happen like that. All right, so I'll also show you how to do those. Um, so yeah, you need this, you need the piano wire, four, five, six, and I've got a number 15. The number 15 is what I use to, to put the sinker on the hook. As you can see, it runs from there, it runs through the eye and down, and you crimp. You use heat shrink and you just shrink it down on the hook and there you go weight it now you get all those different types of oh, sizes which you can use and that depends on the size of your bait um, how much weight you would need to keep that bait swimming up behind the boat all right and then swivels wise i use power swivel as small as i can this is a number six this is quite a nice size a lot of times uh, you can be hit on that you know that's now from your trace your leader and there's a swivel there and just that little white line it makes through the water that can hit you on it so you try and go as small as possible power swivels being much stronger for their size that's why we use them and then uh, these new fast clips kingfisher brought out which is lovely little things we actually use this size for shark fishing 150 200 kilo sharks no problem on braid so you can really trust these little clips and I'll show you what we do with that. At the end of the series of Kuta traces, what I'll do is I'll show you guys a modular trace. Now that makes it a lot easier. You need to have a lot less hooks and steel um, 
to be able to put your traces together. It's modular, you put it according to the size you get on the boat. You can vary how many hooks and the lengths of them. Uh, the skirts, easy to clip on, clip off, okay? Because um, a lot of times, I mean, now I want, I'm using four rods, five rods, six rods, trawling behind the boat or drifting. And uh, I've got two pink ones, two purple ones, two white ones out, and yeah, I get two bites on pink. Now I want to switch all of them to pink. So it means you need six to ten of these traces really tied with pink on your boat. Now what the modular does is you can tie just ten leaders, not ten traces, and keep them in a the bag. Ten of these, ten of these, ten of these with the right skirts or the way you want to fish it. Some of them without skirts. Sometimes you want to fish really down finesse, no skirts. But now it's quick and easy just to clip on another skirt with leader already ready made. So that modular trace, I'll show you guys. So yeah, um, Kucha traces. What I'll do to this, today's gonna be a long clip. I ran you guys through everything. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna start the basics quickly of how I would approach it. So today I'll show you how to make a weighted little hook. All right, I'm gonna do the big one. So you can see easy. And that will be for a bonito, for instance, a nice fat little bonito, one and a half to up to three kilos, and you adjust your sinker. That's why I'll make a, a lot of these, and I have a whole bunch of them in my box. And you'll see in the modular part, it's very easy to do that then. So what you're going to do, you're first going to stick the number 15 through, make it the length. Length you want it to, to uh, kink it, there, you kink it. Okay. You keep it nicely, you see that little shape of the, of the hook. But you can use it like that. All right. And that will sit like that. And you're going to crimp it on. Sinker will start here. And I need a piece to bend up. So I'll just cut it exactly where I measure it. I have to go up there. And then I cut it so it's got a little piece to bend up. I'm going to stick that through. And some of these sinkers, you'll see, you battle to get something through, and some you don't. Alright. So you pull it through like that. You've got your hook. Where you want to sit that. And then you're just going to bend this like that. And cut it off to hold it. Right. Then I push it bottom so I can bend it nice around as much as we can. And then we'll take a piece of the length we need. And the best would be hot water. It's the best way to crimp these, to shrink them. Crimp. And there you have it. Okay, that's your little weighted hook that will carry your bait. Now from there, the basic principle of doing a trace, let's do one. Okay, this is a bigger one, so I'm going to go for a 6, size, size 6 uh, piano wire, 
which I can use then for instance with a bonito and I'll scale up my hooks as well and you're going to put three on this is a size two normally for all the smaller baits would be a size four and on the j-hook a size five okay with a bonito a lot of times there'll be three And on the reds as well, obviously a size 4. Okay, when you want to do the reds. Now, very simple. If you're going to do kuta traces, I normally sit and I'll make 10. Or, you know, whatever size. And I use a little round. You can use a nail or whatever, nice and round, in my vase. And I'll create the first little loop, which I just do like that. It keeps it nice and round and strengthens your trace. Okay see that and then the length I want for the first hook I'll measure that and now if I do 10 traces I make 10 of these quite quickly okay and you keep them you cut them and I'll put them down okay now I'm just making one trace so I'm quickly gonna do that Then what you do, you measure, want the next hook there, and leave enough to twist it. Okay, so now you're going to put your hook on this. I'm going to do two, but the principle applies to three hooks. Okay. Also, obviously a round nose plier works fantastic. I don't have a round nose plier, so I just use the, the pin and the vise. And you have to keep both your wires 45 for at least five to six turns. If you see one start straightening up, you stop, you push it out again, 45, and you twist them. There are tools. I don't like there's a tool here somewhere. There it is. I don't like using the tool. And then you straighten out your long one. You see what I did? In that last turn, I straightened out the long one. I then do straight winds with this to finish off this knot. Just a couple, three, four, five straight turns. Then I take my pliers and I just put it there. This should bend like a little lever. Like that. You'll see guys, that's on the on the back of the back of your uh, American fishing wire and it turns it off that there's no tag. Alright. See there, no tag on that. And that's on the back of the American fishing wire. It shows you shows you how to do that right so that's the one side and that will now go to my carry hook okay and you'll be doing exactly the same with your carry hook and it's quite getting something getting used to to make sure you guys can see what I do. I'll find the angle now. And then 45. Let's watch out for that uh, treble swinging around. I like moving the pliers with it as I go along. Then it makes a neater knot. Like now I didn't move it fast enough, so I didn't make it as neat as what I would like it. Eh? Tag off. First hook on. Okay. 
Now you can already see if you've got a small bonnie this is more than enough. If you start fishing big bonnies you need another hook there. Alright so then I add the second hook. And then you add this hook to your trace, the other side. There you have it, first two. Now for a bigger bunny, like I said, I'll add a third one. Your head part, if you look at this, your head is quite big on a bonnie. So this is just behind the gills, the first one. This is on the back fin or just behind it, <coughs> depending on your size. So this will be on the back fin if it's a bigger one and another hook at the back. And that's how you'll structure this trace. And then from the, for the front end, we'll use number four. Put my swivel, little number six swivel. I like making this loop a little bit smaller, so you just push it a bit down, grab it, and twist. Now this is going to twist up a bit because it's still attached to the roll. Right, once my swivel's on, I'm going to measure how long I want this and add a bit for the knot. Okay, now before you tie this to your hook section, you're first going to decide what skirt you want. You're going to put that on. Let it go down to the swivel. And then what I like to do See those little orange beads from Kingfisher? I just like to put that off to the skirt. It's going to go in under the skirt and then I'm going to tie this. Alright. Right guys, that's it. The basic old fashioned trace, how we're all used to it and how we fish it for kuta. And that you're gonna put in a nice bag neatly on your boat. And that for a bonnie, like I said, I would add a third hook because these are quite big hooks. I would use this for a big bonnie. So I'll add a third hook. And how I would put this away, so use four fingers, leader first, would wrap it in a circle. You can use a a cable tie or whatever you want to use to actually make it neat rubber bands I'll just do that and then you can do the same with the hooks or you can just leave the hooks loose like this I want to show you guys now look at these lovely trace bags must have brought out now that's perfect especially when it comes to Kuta you can put a hell of a lot of them in. That's just the one side and then the other side there as well. So for your traces, really, really a nice, nice bag this. And you just stick it in. Done. Tangle free. It's not going to end up in someone's foot or in your hand or anything. Especially you guys, I mean, anyone who does a bit of deep sea fishing. Deck clean, no hooks, no traces. No rod standing with traces, that's how you have to fish.
because it's so easy one little swell one little misstep and you've got a hook in your leg or in your hand or in your foot or when that boat maybe something really bad happens in the surf and you get strangled in those hooks and stuff you can't save yourself the worst can happen so boat safety big part of boat safety no exposed hooks all right guys very nifty little bag and that's the beginning of the kuta traces i'll run you guys through the rest and make some uh, live bait without the sinkers um, and some with the, the red cable and then the modular trace is what what i'll run you through in the next week or two thank you for watching asfn remember to subscribe remember to like this video and push that little bell notification button uh, to get notified every time we upload a video thank you guys and girls Thank you.